And we have Jill and she says, well, here's a tough question to get the ball rolling for those of us who are in extreme trauma right now. What is the one thing that we can do to experience less pain? Ooh, that's a tough one. My name is Angie Atkinson, and on this channel, I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and we will just get going. You know, a lot of people in empaths, especially, sometimes we become so overwhelmed by the pain and the world around us, even, even sometimes just the ugliness of the world. Because when you're seeing ugly in front of you, which narcissists tend to be, and I don't mean physically ugly, I mean emotionally ugly. Uh, and when you're going through the, re, you know, the, the trauma stuff, Jillian, I think the best thing, this is a tough question. I think the best thing to do is to, first of all, allow yourself to feel that pain because when we're in the relationship, we don't do that typically, or we shove it down as much as we can. So we have to start by trying to work through it. And then once we've done that, you know, and I find ways to work through it such that, that are really helpful, include things like journaling. Um, sometimes you just need to cry for a minute. Uh, and I definitely always recommend putting kind of an end date on that morning and that, that pain. But at the same time, I think the other thing you want to do is once you have worked through it as much as you can, you know, you have to make an intentional choice to jump off, right? So oh, that sounds weird. Jump off the pain wagon. Uh, you have to make an intentional choice to start to focus on what you do want, not what you don't want, and then start to focus on your ability to find, you know, reasons to be grateful around you. And, and then again, to intentionally choose to change your mind and your life in that process. Now that also depends on your, if you feel like you're in a psychological, you know, spiral and you're not able to get out of it, then maybe in some cases you want to consider going to a therapist. But in those cases, you want to make sure that your therapist is educated enough to help you. And I don't mean enough. I mean, educated in the specific area that you need, which is maybe some CPTSD stuff. Um, I know, you know, what is one thing you can do to experience less pain? I think that sounds weird to say, go ahead and experience the pain. But I think what happens to us is that because of our abuse in the past, our nature is to jump and go, I'm not going to let this affect me. I'm going to get through this. I'm so tough. And we are tough. We're tougher than most people we know in real life. But if we can't allow ourselves to feel those feelings, then we can't allow ourselves to heal. Okay. So even though our first instinct is to let go of our feelings and be like, I'm fine. It's fine. It's no big deal. It is a freaking big deal. You know what I mean? There's so much that you have to go through but you have to work through the pain if you're ever going to release it. That's what I'm saying. And Jillian, I don't know if this question is for you or for someone else, you know, or, but if you are still in this sort of pain, you know, you may want to look into some, some real serious personal work. You might want to talk to a therapist. You might want to set up a coaching appointment. I can maybe help you individually, but you definitely don't want to continue to live in it without working through it. Does that make any sense at all? Am I, make, am, I, am I helpful at all? I hope so. What would you have said to Jillian who said, what's the one thing when you're in horrible pain from your trauma that you've gone through, what advice would you offer to somebody like that? What's like your best tips for healing? Maybe? Mm, I think there's a couple things. Um, I guess first and foremost, realizing that the pain that you're in is not going to last forever mm -hmm. and that it's not always going to be this painful. And I think knowing that, because when, whenever we go through any trauma, my house fire an abuse of X, it's like this bomb goes off in your life and it can really feel like you're stuck in that. And like, things are never going to get better because everything is so blown apart. Yeah. But if you realize, no, nope, this is just a chapter in the book of your life. Like this doesn't have to be the whole story. Yeah. So kind of keeping perspective like that. And then I think also realizing that healing is a process, not an event. And that you're going to have good days and bad days. You're going to have good moments and bad moments. And to not wait until you feel 100% healed before you start getting back out there and, and living your life. 
that it tends a lot of this healing and let me touch on this too you know a big part of healing is time but it's also what we do with that time yeah. and so if we're just kind of sitting around you know holding on to our pain it's not going to you know dissipate as quickly or we're not going to process it as quickly as if we can make that conscious decision of okay you know what for the next two hours, I'm going to go out with a friend and go to see a movie or go have dinner with somebody. And I'm going to set my pain down. And this is one of the hardest things to do because you're not going to feel like doing it. Right. But if you can kind of step outside of that pain and just be like, okay, I'm going to put this down and I'm going to go have fun knowing that I can come back and I can pick up that pain if I, if I need to, or if I want to. Yeah. You know, that these, like these that. events, these painful events and the joyous events in life occur, can occur simultaneously, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of like the house fire thing, you know, we went out, you know, I still making it a point to go out with friends and to go out and have fun, even though, especially those first two weeks, I didn't feel like it at all. And you have, I had to just do that because it's like, I, I need to do that because that pain can just be so engulfing that it steals your life. And I think to make that conscious decision of not letting this person or this situation steal any more of your joy or of your happiness, and you kind of dig your heels in and you start living a good life for yourself because you deserve it, not necessarily because you feel like it. And in yeah. time, you will start to feel more like it. Yeah. And one of the things I suggested was a lot of times when we go through any sort of serious trauma, especially when we're talking about with a narcissist. I, f I find, I found during my relationships with narcissists that I was never allowing myself to feel anything. I was always focusing on what, you know, how could I keep that person happy? And I didn't have time to be sad. I had to focus on them. And so I was shoving a lot down. So I, the first thing I said was before anything else, you have to let yourself kind of work through it and stop trying to shove it down just for a minute, you know, like let yourself feel it first. And then move forward. What do you think about that? I think that's great advice. And I think a lot of people, I would say myself included too, even after um, going through it, they either tend to feel full of rage or they feel numb. Yeah. I did. And numbness. <laughs> Various times. Yeah. Yeah. Numbness is, is a hard emotion to kind of shift out of. I mean, at least with anger, there's a lot of uh, energy in anger and you can it can feel like trying to direct a, a loose fire hose. Great way to put it. Yeah. You know, but if you can channel that anger into something constructive, doesn't have to be, I mean, you can go run around the block a few times. You can go clean out a junk drawer. You can, you know, just move out and get away from your narcissist. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, start burning off that energy in like yeah. more positive ways. The numbness is, is something that's, I think this is another one of those little moments where we have those flashes of, Hey, maybe there's something more here because I think a lot of people that are so used to being out of tune with their emotions, maybe they weren't allowed to be angry or upset when they were a child. And now they're having to kind of explore emotions that they've never really felt before. Yeah. Because they've spent decades trying to always be the peacekeeper or get along or, um, you know, they, they were the ones that they, they consider themselves to be, oh, I just, I go along to get along kind of thing. And now all of a sudden they're numb and they're like, I just don't even know how to feel. And there's things that you can do because Angie's right. It's about feeling those emotions and then kind of working through them. Um, I think some of the things, if you're having trouble getting angry or if you're having, having trouble even being sad, to try to allow time to provoke those emotions, like milk those emotions within you. Yeah. You can watch, you know, one of my favorite all time sad movies is the old movie Beaches with Barbara Hershey and uh, Bette Midler. I love and, that movie. Isn't that great? I, I love that movie too. And, you know, movies that are not a love story, mm -hmm. right? But that are just sad and, and that'll get those tears flowing and then just kind of keep riding that wave. Yeah. Yeah, it helps. It helps a it lot. It really does. Right.
Thanks for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you right here and right here. And check out the videos I've left for you in the cards above because those are going to help you to become more connected with yourself and your recovery. And hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. Now, don't forget, you are never alone. You always have your family. I'll see you soon.